Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I want to show you a little bit that you can do to make your life easier with uh, any kind of node setup in Blender, whether these are compositing nodes, shader nodes for for either the Blender internal render engine or cycles, uh, any kind of texture nodes, basically any kind of nodes within Blender, there's a little thing you can use called frame nodes that can make your life a lot easier when it comes to organizing your nodes. So here in front of you, you can see an example here. And this is actually the the current work in progress of a node setup that I'm doing for the, the Cookie Flex rig, which is the rig that is being bundled with the Animation Toolkit training series uh, by Bjorn Leonard and Nathan Bagdahl that is, uh, at the time of this recording, is in pre-order but will be released very, very shortly. Uh, and what we have here is we have a, uh, basically a couple different node setups that are trying to replicate the same shaders in the Blender internal engine and the Cycles render engine. Since they both use some of the same nodes, but then also some unique nodes, you can actually have both node setups created at the same time for both different render engines. And then when you just change the engine, it just automatically uses the correct nodes. So this is pretty cool, but since we're trying to keep it as cross-compatible as possible and also reduce the work on our end, we're also trying to reuse as many elements as we can. And one of the other things is that since this rig uh, has a lot of custom controls in it, there's also some things that we're driving, which you can, which are, I'm going to talk about a little bit, which are these nodes up in here, that need to be influencing the effect of both shaders. And so this starts to become a pretty complicated node setup. And if we start looking in here, you know, there's actually a couple of group nodes where I've got this group nodes of cycles nodes, another group node here. I've got a group node down here. I've got a bunch of other nodes for the internal render engine. I've got several different texture nodes. But the thing that you'll notice is that aside from all the messy lines, everything is pretty clean and organized and they're sectioned off. You'll notice that I have these kind of dark backgrounds behind each section. So up in here, we have what are called driven nodes. And you can see all of the values are purple to indicate they have drivers on them. Then I have my cycles shaders. Then I have my Blender internal shaders. Then I have my Blender internal texture maps and my cycles texture maps. And these background panels are very, very handy. And these are what are called frames. And frames are incredibly useful for organization because not only do they provide kind of a backdrop here, but you can also, if I just say select my cycles frames, let's say I want to move all of my cycle shaders over to the right. Well, I could just go in and I could select each one of these nodes and then move them, but I can also just select just the frame and move that over. Or I could select just this frame and move it over. And then you may notice that I actually have two sets of frames. Basically, I have one complete frame that moves everything. So I could have multiples of these. So if you know if I had a whole lot of different node setups, I could have a frame that then contains all these nodes. And then I can have subframes that then contain the next one. So here I can just move these ones. Then I can move these ones. And you'll notice that the frame, this line right here, which is a little hard to see, but it's that line, is automatically scaling as I move my nodes. So this is really, really handy. So let's take a look at how we use frames. First of all, how do we add a new frame? So if we hit Shift A, we can simply go down to Layout and choose Frame. And then we have this little frame here that we can use. And we see that's all fine and dandy. We can bring it, we can scale it up a little bit, but there's not a whole lot we can do with it. But if we open up the Properties panel within, we can then see we could go ahead and name this. So this will be our frame. And maybe since this text is pretty small, let's go and increase the text size. We'll just go to 30 so it's nice and big. And then we can actually turn off shrink if we want, which shrink is what is happening when, say, like I move this node and it's automatically expanding or or shrinking the border of the frame node to then fit. Generally, you know, I like to use that, but if you don't want that to happen, then you can just turn that off and then the frame node can be scaled any way that you choose to get the exact size that you want. But what if we want to, say, add a node to this? Well, let's just... Let's just hit Shift A and we'll add in, we'll just go ahead and add in a, right now I'm set to the Blender render, so Blender internal engine. So let's just add in a color node. We're not actually going to be doing any compositing or shaders or anything like that. This is just purely for example. So let's add in a mix node. And then I want to add this node to that frame. Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. The simplest way to do it is simply just hit G to grab the node and then just left click and drop it on top of the frame. 
and then it'll automatically place it in the in the frame and allow you to work with it. So let's maybe then just duplicate this mix node and you'll see that it's automatically then included in the frame. So we can do this as many times as we want. We can just add in any node that you want. So as long as you left click, then it'll be placed right in there. If we then just like grab the frame, it moves all of those around. So, but then what if we say, you know, we've got a whole bunch of nodes in here. Maybe we've got a whole bunch of color nodes. We'll just say duplicate these a whole bunch of times. And we want these color nodes to be kind of like these, where it's basically we have one overall frame and then we have subframes. Well, this basically works by just adding in a new frame like this and then dropping it on top of the frame, and then it is then included within that frame. So basically putting a frame on top of a frame will then include it in that. So then we could grab all these nodes, and we'll just say select all these, hit G, left click right there, and then it automatically adds those to that frame. So now we have a sub or a frame within a frame. And this is really, really handy. We'll go ahead and increase this size. We'll just say maybe take that up to say 25, and we'll name this as our sub frame. Cool. Well, what if we decide, you know, I want to remove one of these RGB color nodes from this frame. Well, if I just grab it, I can't pull it out. So the way that you can do this is uh, the easiest way is by parenting. So if you think of this in terms of objects, remember that a, a parent or a child parent relationship is basically where the parent controls the child. So anything that you do to, or basically any way that you transform the parent, it'll transform the child. So we can basically think of it the same way with the nodes. So if we just hit alt P, which is the hotkey to remove a parent with a node selected, it automatically just removes it from the frame. You can also just hit alt F and that will also remove it from the frame. So this is really, really cool. So we can we can add nodes to frames. We can add subframes. Uh, we might even be I don't know if you can do three levels deep. Oh yeah, it looks like you can do you can do as at least three levels deep, maybe more. Uh, so then you could include that within that frame. So this is really really handy. But there's one other thing that makes frames really nice, and that is the ability to add custom colors. So if I click custom color here, I can then set a color. However, you'll notice an immediate problem. I don't have any color. And this is a, a little thing basically that is down to the theme that you're using in Blender, which right now I'm using the def default theme. And so this is actually something that probably ought to be changed, but for the time being, as long as you're aware of it. And that is if you go into the user preferences and go into your theme sections and then the node editor, um, you can see that the frame node right here, the transparency on it is absolute zero. So if you just increase this though, to say like 0.1, then you, you immediately get your color. So it was transparent, or basically we didn't get any color because it was completely transparent. And so now you can see that I've actually added color to a lot of these. Um, and so that's really, really handy to then have custom colors. So you could go, you could add this one. This will maybe be a blue or a red or, you know, whatever you wanted it to be. And maybe we would even increase this to say, why don't we do like 0.25? That way, so we have a little bit more color in there. And there we go. So that just gives us a little bit more visual indication of what's different. So that's how you can use frame nodes. Uh, you can Again, you can use them in compositing. You can use them in shaders. Pretty much whatever you want. They don't affect the actual nodes themselves. They're merely a organization tool that can really help you get really clean layouts. Um, and, you know, once you start getting really complex node set setups, and frankly, this is not a very complex node setup. You know, this may look a little complex, but, and even with our, you know, group shaders and things like that, it's actually not that complex. Uh, you know, if you start looking at some of like the compositing node setups from say Tears of Steel or Sintel, they're just mind boggling. Uh, and so things like frames can be really, really helpful.